Hello and welcome to the Musical Instrument Investigator. Today we are on the website of Tenants Auctioneers based in the UK and we're going to have a look at their auction which is Scientific and Musical Instruments, Cameras and Tools. So of course we're only going to look at the musical instrument part of this auction so that's about 62 lots so it's going to be a pretty quick uh, video. Uh, the rest of the stuff we're going to leave. Um, this particular auction is due to finish on the 11th of May. It is the 9th as I'm recording this video. So there's a couple of days left to go. Um, it seems that the buyer's premium on this uh, auction is 22%. So that's 22% you pay on top of the final hammer price. Um, this auction, as I said, is in the UK. So if you're uh, in Europe or international, then check all the terms and conditions, etc. at the top that explain import, export fees, shipping, etc., etc. Or even if you're in the UK, there may be kind of shipping fees. Uh, I'm in a slightly different room today and there may be some background noise in the... Uh, you can hear maybe cars and things like that so i do apologize for that but sometimes this is just the the way that it goes so if you do hear some random cars in the background that's all it is it's a bit of bit of ambient uh, noise for you there so anyway without further ado um let's just kind of crack on and those of you that watch some of my other videos may know that i've been a bit critical of tenants in the past for the quality of their photography uh, or lack of uh, but I believe that the last auction they were quite good um, or at least better than they were before um, so let's kind of uh, see how they are at the moment and uh, take it from there so lot one we have a viola uh, interesting it's got the Romberg fingerboard on the viola which you really don't see very often you obviously still see quite a few of the Rombergs on the cellos but on violas not so common 500 to 700 is the uh, estimate there um, there's a remains of a paper label, but there's uh, no other information. At least we can see the front, uh, the back, and the scroll of the instrument. Uh, hard to really say much about this particular instrument, but uh, it looks kind of uh, interesting uh, enough, not too bad. Um, the kind of measurements are all in inches there. It'd be nice to see uh, some more millimeter kind of information, but. Uh, there you go, but otherwise not too bad. Um, let's just have a look if we can see the high res photos. Can we zoom in quite far and see? Yeah, they're not too bad. They're obviously not the caliber of kind of Teresia or anything like that, but actually it's uh, it's an improvement from previous tenants auctions. So we've got to give them uh, credit for that. Uh, a violin, uh, two piece back, labeled Arthur Bowler. Uh, badly damaged, split down length of body, body uh, belly even. Base bar loose, lower ribs also broken, other defects. I mean, it's very, this just looks like the most generic of trade violins ever, 40 to 60 pounds. So we can pretty much ignore that. Uh, now we have a one piece back uh, violin, um, branded Minel, um, with a box stamped VO, and there's one of these kind of zither things. Actually, there's a second uh, instrument here, together with a violin. Okay, let's have a look at the first one then. So I believe this is this is the one that looks fairly kind of tradey. The bow it could be slightly interesting. Let's have a look here. This is obviously in a fairly bad condition. But uh, I mean, it's so difficult to tell the way that these uh, the angles of these pictures uh, it looks really distorted here. The way that they've taken that photo, uh, difficult to say really. But uh, estimate one to two hundred pounds. I don't know. Could be interesting. Uh, these harp zithers that uh, no one is really too interested in these days. Uh, another violin here. Uh, remnants of label chap. Or something like that 800 to 1200 is the estimate there some new wood to write of right hand sound hole and cheek repair to scroll okay let's have a look well it's in an interesting uh, condition isn't it I mean it looks like it's been messed around with a bit I mean it's very difficult to actually to say what exactly is is going on here so there's something 
funny here. I think this is what they're talking about, new wood. It's uh, definitely had a hard life. It's just difficult to pick out anything. The back is kind of interesting enough. It has some interesting points, but the scroll is just a bit kind of uninspiring. But, yeah, not sure about that one. The picture is uh, picture is difficult to see, really. Another violin here uh, with a Nicholas Amatis label, 150 to 200 is the estimate. We can have a look here. This looks like a fairly standard kind of trade violin. Looks kind of in okay-ish uh, condition. Another violin here. Doesn't seem to have a label. It says decorative uh, pyrography to ribs. Interesting scroll there. So, yeah, details here. It's actually looks in pretty pretty good condition. This instrument, whatever it is, looks like someone's kind of tried to do a similar to one of the Stradivari instruments. It's interesting that they say decorative pyrography to the ribs, which I guess we'd assume to see here at the side, as you can see, kind of little elements just there, but they don't give us pictures of it. So, which is really odd to me to kind of make a point of something in your listing and then not show the photos but anyway 800 to 1200 pounds could be could be interesting it's i mean it's a nice looking uh looks quite well made instrument but very difficult to tell without additional images another violin here labeled lewis f milton bedford england 1932 uh hawks and sun label as well 700 to 900 is the uh, estimate looks kind of fairly Interesting. It doesn't look too bad. Looks plausible as potentially that kind of early twentieth century English could be. Uh, another violin here, labelled George Lankel Geigenmarker, with three bows. Okay, one hundred to one hundred fifty. This really slight odd arrangement of uh, photos here. looks in fairly decent condition so not too bad another violin no label cased with a bow I mean they really do kind of pick the worst ways to photograph these instruments or maybe they do that on purpose hard to say what this is I think fairly kind of tradey type instrument another violin no label broken bow once again looks fairly kind of trade like instrument another violin labeled Charles Boothold Luthier six to eight hundred pounds this one looks like it's uh it doesn't look like we get the small window on that for some reason i mean on the surface this looks like to be a french violin of of some kind so i expect that people will bid on it, it looks in fairly good condition another violin here labeled the barnes and mullins companion cased with two bows Oh, one violin with no label and then another one that's companion. Just looking if there's any interesting details. That's the, uh, here's the Mullins companion with its two bows. Nothing too exciting uh, from the bows there. And instrument looks fairly standard as well. Uh, okay, violin, labelled Hawks and Son, Magini violin, 1908, four to £600. Let's see, estimate there. Once again, looks in fairly good condition. Not too bad, kind of 
trade violin of the early 20th century, four to six hundred. It could be, could be okay. Another violin labelled Charles Claude Francois Darche, Brussels. 1874 estimate 2600 to 3000 picture of the label they've even got there i think you need to be very careful with instruments like this and really know your stuff or get um advice from someone that does there's a lot of these types of violins floating around with kind of slightly dubious labels i can't really comment on this instrument at all but I would definitely advise people to get kind of more opinions uh, on it another violin here labelled uh, Chasson Hagerstrand Stockholm uh, with another violin a Czech violin this looks like a ultra tradey violin interesting kind of scroll I'm assuming that this is the one that's labelled um, Stockholm. Another violin here labelled Jean Barzoni, Paris, 1840, with another violin labelled Regin and another one labelled Arietta. So let's have a look at this first one. looks fairly standard that one and these just seem quite tradey there it looks like kind of child size violins they have just a really odd backward way of putting this information across um, I just find it a bit clunky another violin with a Stradivari label another good of bizarre angles interesting looking frog there on that bow definitely curious um, yeah nothing really to see there another violin stamp Douglas and Co London yeah nothing too much there Another violin, a Strad label. Doesn't look in too bad condition. Estimate seems about right. Cello here, workshop for Andreas Zeller, so Romanian cello. Seem to only give you the front uh, picture there. Another cello, another Romanian cello. It's with a kind of another oh it's the this is the seven eighth violin i think just looks like a pretty much unfinished kind of chinese violin almost and here is the romanian cello with the bow so nothing too much there a double bass ebony fingerboard playing length uh 40 and three quarters labeled Made in Germany. Let's just see. Bag with bow, but no picture of the bow. Looks fairly interesting. Uh, double bass bow, German pattern, open fixed frog, overall length. So uh, I think that this is, well, I. I would kind of consider this to be like a Dragonetti uh, style bow after the famous uh, double bass player and like the precursor to the German bow so I guess technically it kind of is what became the 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 German bow but I always think of this particular model with that kind of curvature and this kind of head as um as a dragonetti model personally two to three hundred i mean that actually could i would suspect that this would go for a lot higher than that because these are not that common these uh these kind of style of of bows 
Um, so I think that could go a lot higher. Interesting to see that bow here though. Double bass, three strings, interesting. 1200 to 1800, a bow just uh, perched there. Quite interesting. Wonder if that's kind of set up in some way as a historic uh, base. Alto saxophone there, engraved the Indiana by Martin Elkhart. Hundred to hundred and fifty. Uh, buffet B twelve clarinet there. Got another picture. Ruddle Cart and Co. Three piece rosewood flute. 150 to 200. Various woodwind instruments there. Recorders and uh, looks like another clarinet there. There's a few other kind of woodwind type instruments. So 80 to 120 there is the estimates. Definitely not too bad. Uh, Antoine Courtois trumpet there. We've seen a lot of those recently. Oh, did we uh, skip one? No, I think we're okay. French horn there, engraved Paxman, Amborg, Primo, Como, Italy. 7T to £100 there in a Yamaha case. Interesting. A King Trombone 3B, King USA. Uh, looks like the Pictures kind of disappeared. We can see the high res one anyway. Tenor horn, forward facing, marching style, and E flat. Imported by Boozy and Hawks, made in the GDR. A trombone there, engraved old studio Fullerton, California. Trumpet in D by Yamaha. Tuba, the triumphonic class A, made by Salvationist Publishing. Oh, and there's another small bore trombone by Antoine Courtois. Uh, Antonio Ariza, Spanish guitar. Two to three hundred. It's a CITES A10 certificate for the uh, for the rosewood. Classical guitar with maker's label Felix. Manzanero, Madrid, 1966, 900 to 1200 is the estimate. CITES certificate on that as well. It actually looks fairly interesting. The Armand by Guild Starfire, semi hollow body electric guitar, 250 to 300 there. This is the kind of lesser brand of the guild uh, company electric guitar by Kimbara which is FX 109 through body neck 70 to 100 interesting looking thing quite cool electric guitar semi acoustic labelled vintage by John Hornby Skews okay. Hundred and fifty to two hundred. Electric semi acoustic guitar. What's the brand there? Rally. Yeah, I remember this uh, brand. It's, it's fairly standard. Fender Music Master Bass Amplifier made in the USA, two to three hundred. Nice. Uh, Fender Stratocaster there. Uh, made in the USA, five to seven hundred. Uh, Fender Stratocaster 1974 stroke 5, 1500 to 2000. It's got a CITES certificate there. What do they say about this? Sunburst body, rosewood fingerboard. They don't say much about kind of replaced parts. Worth uh, investigating. Fender wall clock, that's interesting. Made by Sam Hutton, California from original scrap parts in 1950s, 60s. 
Sam Hutton worked in the Fender Amplifier Cabinet Department. After he retired in the 1980s, he made these clocks. 150 to 200 pounds, so that's kind of cool. Not seen one of those before. Garrison Acoustic Guitar with Maker's Label, Garrison Guitars. Uh, crafted in Canada, 2000, 2 to 300. Name rings a bell, can't quite remember much about them. Hondo Acoustic Guitar, 30 to 40 pounds. Tanglewood 12 string acoustic guitar, 80 to 120. Tanglewood electric guitar, and it looks like there's a banjo and some uh, harmonicas and a tuner. Flatback mandolin labelled Gabrielli D'Angelica uh, Napoli. It's a fairly standard kind of thing. Um, here's a Ko Aloha Soprano ukulele there, made in Hawaii, 120 to 180. These are good quality ukuleles, are quite popular and I think they're really, really fine ones. You can go into the to the thousands. Loot back mandolin there. Um, plug on headstock, headstock, the Michigan. Uh, Hona Melodian there. Uh, Serenellini Accordion, a lot of pictures of accordions, someone likes uh, accordions I think. Accordion World Master Stella, oh, and uh, Bujin Hawk's Trumpet, and uh, a flute, uh, and one of those uh, stylophones, that's a pretty random lot. Uh, Soprani Castel Fidardo Accordion, they're 120 bass. 40 to 60. AKG, a pair of C451B microphones there. Uh, and more microphones. A C535EB microphone. Um, D Burley Northumbrian small pipes. Seven key wooden chanter and drones. There you go. We've seen quite a few uh, uh, pipes recently in one of the previous auctions. French auction. Scottish small pipes there, three drones, eight old chanter, uh, chanter, cased with spare reeds and accessories, 770 pounds to 100, I'm going, going mad. Uh, SE Electronics, a pair of SE4400A microphones. Uh, Yamaha bass recorder, stamped in Japan, together with a Hona Melodica made in Germany. Interesting. And... Oh, we've gone the wrong way. That's good. Oh, that seems to be it. Uh, so yeah, we've uh, we've covered all of the uh, the lots. It seems. So yeah, I mean, a few interesting bits here. Still not overly kind of uh, enthralled by the quality of the photographs, but uh, but still, it's getting better than it was before. The guitar photos are pretty decent. I just think the violins could do with a bit of improvement, but. Uh, yeah, not too bad an auction, very small, very short kind of one, but worth checking out. Um, as always, I'll put the link in the description. Um, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Ciao! Many thanks for tuning in to the Musical Instrument Investigator. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please like, uh, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and watch out for the next video coming soon.